This is a, a brief lecture about Tennessee Williams. Tennessee Williams lived from 1911 to 1983. He was born Thomas Lanier Williams in Columbus, Mississippi on March 28th. His father was a salesman who was away from home most of the time and so his mother raised him. You see characters in Williams' plays who have uh, only a mother, uh, a single mother, or who have a father who uh, is away from home and just mentioned. And this seems to be um, the case with Williams when he was young. When he was still a child, his family moved to St. Louis, Missouri. And this was a very unhappy move for him. He had been happy in Columbus, Mississippi, but was very unhappy in Missouri. In fact, he seems to have become somewhat reclusive and isolated at this time of his life. Eventually, Williams attended the University of Missouri, and he was a journalism major, and he was happy at the university, but his father disapproved of his choice to go to the University of Missouri. Uh, it was kind of funny. The reason his father didn't want him to attend university there was because Tennessee Williams' girlfriend also attended school there, and the father did not approve of young women and young men going to college together. So he forced Tennessee to drop out of college, and Tennessee became a sales clerk at a shoe company. He was terribly unhappy in this situation, eventually had a nervous breakdown, had to be hospitalized. Um, he was able to complete a college degree, not at the University of Missouri. But the real uh, important thing that happened for him was that at the age of 28, he moved to New Orleans. He moved there, one suspects, to get away from family influence and to start his own life. And in fact, when he moved to New Orleans, he changed his name to Tennessee. So after that, he was never known as Thomas Lanier Williams again, but was known as Tennessee Williams. Williams became a playwright and wrote many plays. The first very um, famous play that he wrote was first um, shown on March 31st. First, 1945, on Broadway, and it was The Glass Menagerie. The Glass Menagerie has those characters that I was mentioning, uh, a mother who was at home with her, with her son and daughter, raising them, and a husband who was away from home. And you can tell from this first popular Tennessee Williams play that um, Williams did not write about healthy family relationships. A Streetcar Named Desire, which was um, first produced or first, um, first shown two years later, won for Williams the Pulitzer Prize along with many other prizes. And this is the play that you all are studying for, for me this semester. It's one of his most famous and it really shows the um, the themes and the characters that become trademark Tennessee Williams characters. There are many other hits that um, Williams is famous for. One of those, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, uh, became one of one of the most popular movies of its time. And um, as you see here from the ad for the movie, all the shock and fervor of Tennessee Williams' scorchingly outspoken play, this ad says. So you see that Williams was someone who absolutely uh, went against the, the mores of society, the rules of society, to create very real and very honest depictions, most often of Southern characters. Let's talk about A Streetcar Named Desire just a little bit and the characters who are in this play because they really are very important and, and help you to understand Williams well. First of all is Blanche Dubois and as you watch the play or read the, the play, you discover that Blanche is the oldest of two sisters. She stayed behind at the family plantation, Belle Reeve, which means beautiful dream, and it was her responsibility to protect the families heritage, the family tradition, the Old South, um, as it were. Blanche wasn't successful in protecting Belle Reeve, though, because the family members that she was left there to look after, the older family members, slowly died off, and she had to spend the money that they had to take care of these elderly people and to bury them. She eventually lost Belle Reeve. 
Bellary wasn't the only thing Blanche lost, though. She also lost her youth. She lost her innocence. She lost her one great love. And um, she lost her profession as a teacher. So Blanche represents the Old South and all of the ways that the Old South crumbled and fell and was lost um, in the new, the new South. Stanley Kowalski, who's Polish, represents the New South in many ways. He represents uh, outsiders coming in and taking over. He represents the working man. At the time that this play would have been produced and, and um, during my childhood, people who were of Polish descent were not um, held in high esteem. As a matter of fact, there were quite a many Polish jokes or jokes about Polish people as if they were ignorant people who were all bulk and brawn and no brain. And Stanley Kowalski kind of represents that um, all bulk and all brawn uh, person who gets by on his physicality, on his physical nature. He is the man of the house and remember that he reminds everyone of the Napoleonic code that the man owns whatever the woman owns and so forth. And the way that he keeps control in his household is to physically injure the women who, who are in that household. Stella Kowalski, who is Blanche's younger sister, represents that person who tries to survive from the Old South into the New. And she's had to uh, change quite a bit, and she's had to give up herself in many ways in order to survive. At the end of this play, you see that she even gives up her sister in order to have a life with Stanley. And then Harold Mitchell, who's also called known as Mitch, and who becomes a, a type of boyfriend for Blanche for a while, represents that person who um, purely judges the world through a set of old traditions and and um, when he discovers that Blanche does not live up to those traditions, he, um, he can no longer have anything to do with her. There's one other character in A Streetcar Named Desire, and that is the setting of New Orleans. If you look at the beginning of the, of the play, you see Blanche saying that she was told to take a streetcar named Desire and come to a place called Elysian Fields, which is the, the, the land of, of t after death, um, uh, the place where, where people go after they have died. And so the, the setting of New Orleans and all the ways that New Orleans is different from the rest of the South and from the rest of the world in many ways, and this journey on a streetcar, these become like characters in Tennessee Williams' play. Now what I'd like for you to do is think about the play itself. Think about the characters. Think about the setting. Choose a question that really, really interests you to answer. We're going to do this the same way we've been doing, where you ask the question, read two different resources that answer the question, and then give your own answer. But I also want you to go one step further with this one, and that step is to make a connection to present time. If you choose New Orleans, if you choose one of these characters, write about the characters from the perspective of two critics, write about the character from your own perspective, but then connect that character with a present day character from fiction, from movies, from, from television shows, or a person who's walking and breathing. Perhaps you know a Blanche Dubois or a Stella Kowalski, someone who is living in the past or trying to, to remain young even in, the, even in the very real evidence of her aging or someone who is adjusting to the present so that she can survive. Or maybe you know a Stanley, um, a male chauvinist pig as it were. Take these ideas and turn them into a blog. And of course, your blog is due when you come, before you come to class, I'm sorry, by 6 p.m. on Monday. Now, the question was, why are the blogs not due at midnight? The blogs are due by 6 p.m. so that I can try to get them graded on Monday evening. And if you're concerned that this weekend you're going to be busy, today is Tuesday. You have four days until the weekend, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, counting today. So, um, 
Blogs are due by 6 p.m. on Monday. Please get them done on time. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll see you all next Tuesday morning.